alive for good. Um, <clears throat> cheat sheets. Where are they? There they are. <clears throat> and I need a 12 sided dice. That's 10. That's a 12. There goes 8. That's 10. 12. 12 sided dice. As needed. Found. Okay. <clears throat> so we are back for another accountable practice session. Um, First session of the day for me. Um, I guess only real new development lately is uh, I went and picked up my music for the next TPO show. Uh, it's an Ed show. It should be cool. Um, apart from that, it's a lot of the same. Um, I picked up the music. Nothing in it made me panic, being like, oh, God, I have to change my routine and what I'm working on. So it's nice because that does happen. Um, so, right, so we're going to get started and jump sort of right in after I get in. So, we're going to be working today. Let me pull up my OBS. There it is. Uh, with this guy. Grass gym. Um, yeah, that's just what we're going to work with today. Um, first, we're going to start with some breathing. Um, going as usual when I can, I will have um, descriptions, exercises over here when I'm able to. Um, if you've been here before, you know this one. We're going to start with just the good old fashioned, don't turn off your phone, it doesn't ring. Um, in for four, out for four. Um, no, hang on. There we go. Um, yeah, the usual. We're just going to do sort of in for four, out for four, working on minimizing turnaround and just smoothing out the best we can our breath. So there we go. Um, yeah, I just, I like to do that, to just start getting my air focused. Um, I think like a lot of brass players, there's always the struggle with making sure there's no hitches in the air, right? Just great breath. Um, next time we're with just mouthpiece brim, right? Um, I don't do a lot of free buzzing, as in I don't do any free buzzing. I've, I've never found it helped me. I find it just kind of screws up my chops, so... Yeah, um, I'm gonna share my stream. I just forgot to do that. Bear with me for a second. Share stream. Switch. Sweet. Okay, done. Um, so yeah, just so I'm just gonna do some basics. Buzz any tones. I call these like my first sound exercises. It doesn't matter what pitch comes out. I'm just going for sound. With an air attack. No tongue. Um, let's see. Let's take our 
we use our eight-sided dice, and we're going to do six arrow attacks. I like that. I'm just gonna do the same thing, but now, but just slur up and down, just like really small sirens on the rim. Each time, just stretch it a little bit more. So, so like I said, um, today I'm going to be working with the brass gym. Um, if you've been in the stream before, you sort of know my philosophy on daily routines. Um, so unless someone specifically asks me a question, I'm going to just sort of, I'm just going to jump right in. Um, I'm not going to do the whole breathing or brass gym today. Um, we're going to do some. Use a pitch source when you bust. a little bit. The end rimmers, when you buzz, a little bit of rest. Rest with a T. Um, we're going to part three. I, I skipped part one of their breathing thing just because um, I did. Piece part three, which is taken from the, sorry, um, is taken from the Jack Stamp books. It's, it's where it comes from.
that is enough buzzing for today. For now. There is buzz later. So let's jump right into some porn. Um, so yeah, I'm going to say again, scrolling up at the top right, um, if you have any questions, type them in the chat. Um, if you have any suggestions or questions that you want a specific answer to, type them um, in the suggestion box. Um, I do look at those, and I'll take them to the device. Um, so now we're doing question. So there we go. Breast and mushroom sizes are up next. Um, so yeah, I haven't put any drone work yet today, but there will be. I had someone ask me about drones the other day. You can do them whenever. Um, really. Um, especially in your exercise and warm-ups. So like we're starting with these chromatics, um, which are sort of akin to the setting up exercises. And it, it's really easy to turn these into uh, drone exercises. Um, uh, I think a lot of times we just get hung up on doing the same kind of exercises. So, for example, if I want to do this as a drone exercise, um, I just do this part. Um, and, it, and it works well as a drone exercise because you're starting from a pitch and you always have to come back to it and you're making sure you're always coming back down to the same spot. It's not creeping up intonation wise. What we're gonna do, we're gonna set our metronome to let's say 96. Oh, 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 that's really slow. 112. Okay. Um, I hope that's not too loud on the screen. So let's go away. Wow, I'm gonna use some drums today. <laughs>
Every time I go through the soft touch scales, um, it's about playing the softest sound I can, but as controlled as possible. Um, and I'll just spend a whole bunch of time here until I really feel like I'm starting to get my soft under control. So G major, or C major horn G. questions, feel free to ask them in chat about brass playing and whatnot. Um, yeah, love to explain things. Uh, we got a six. Six is F major. again. This is a horrible dice. One more time. Okay, three. D major. Thank you. 
to finish this, go to the next exercise. There's a question there. Um, how can you play low notes quietly without losing tone? Um, on the horn, difficulty, setting good. So yeah, um, as, as a low horn player, um, sort of that's where my first job was, th I have some thoughts about this. Um, learning to play quietly low is based upon being able to, to me at least, you need to have success in playing loud down there. Um, and like, down in that register, um, to really lock it in. There's a great exercise. Um, it's in the technical, is it the Toyberg book? Technical studies for, oh, it's William Brophy book. Um, it goes, it starts at a G and it goes down to an F sharp. Um, and it's on our G major, you go. myself learning to play soft in the low register took me to figure out how to slot the note exactly right um, and then I started just doing long tones down there um, because you need to know where it is and it's to be kind of technical about it it's about making sure the aperture and embouchure is set properly and that the flow rate matches what's happening I think usually what happens we go into the low register and we either are relying on the air to get the buzz because we don't have enough kind of activation, or we're relying on not using enough air to get like a kind of crappy buzz. So to work on it down there, um, do reverse hairpins, right? Go, um. But I would still spend time working down to the range from what works and like slotting in the notes and then just spending time trying to play soft down there. Um, I have the same problem. I have that problem up high. It takes me a lot of work to keep tone playing soft in the high register. So yeah, just some thoughts. I hope that answered it. Um, but yeah, it's just about figuring out what has to happen at the chops, uh, making sure it's good and anchored in the corners and the triangle, and that you're not losing the embouchure, and that there's just enough air moving at a rate which makes it vibrate. Um, Long tones are a good way to work on that. Um, but start loud, go soft. Always start with what works and go to what doesn't work. Um, cool, so now I'm gonna do smooth air movement. Great question um, from the brass tube. I'm just gonna keep running ahead here. Let's go 76, it's a fun tempo. <laughs> always told me it's, it's not about figuring out how someone does it, it's about understanding the concept and then figuring out how you have to do it to make the concept work.
jump to next, um, let me just put the OBS here for a second, um, I'm going to jump over to some of, uh, that's not what I want, um, there we go, yeah, um, setting up exercises, the, the Clark exercise, um, um, if you've been following, following, follow, following, if you've been following the stream, there we go, I got it out finally. Um, I've been doing these more and more. Um, and generally, I'll do these before I have to do a high range thing. Um, I'll, I'll pick a couple. Uh, the excerpt out there is the, the C major one. Um, I'm going to do that one, and I'm also going to do the one that starts on A flat. I don't have an excerpt of the A flat to share because I don't. Um, so, yeah, this is what the the setting up exercises are. Again, yeah, I, um, I like to do these before I start working up in the high range. I just find it, it sets things sort of how I'm going to want them set. Um, I start them slow, I work my way up. So, you know, I'll start at 133 today. So, I'll start at 133 and we'll work our way up. So, I'm with the one that you see, and then we're going to start after we do a bunch of iterations. This we do on A flat. I'm blabbing because I take you have to take time between exercises, so I'm filling it with information. I don't have any notes.
this exercise. Um, if you look at the example on the screen, where this it'll be the second time contract is listed, contract continues down the beginning of the diminuendo, right? We have to maintain the chop, and this is what I was talking about in the low range. We got to keep the chop up as we go down, because um, it's going to compensate for the loss of air. Right, we're ascending to the horn, so we're taking away resistance, which means we need more air, so we have to keep the corners up, and then we relax. And it's just keeping this imbalance, and that's why I like these stand-up exercises. It's using a chromatic scale to like very specifically train muscular action, um, and we don't do a lot of that. We tend to do music, etudes, and hope it comes. So this is super focused work. <laughs> Um, so again, on the screen is group ones. Uh, group twos is basically the exact same, um, but it starts higher. Instead of crescendoing to mezzo forte, crescendo's to forte. Um, that's the difference. So a little wider dynamic range, a little higher in the instrument. So we're going A flat to A flat. <laughs>
Onwards and upwards. Well, faster, I guess, not really upwards. Um, stop doing those. Um, and now, like I had said um, when I was doing them, now I'll go into the high range. Um, we take it some time, we set it up. You know, we've been going for, <coughs> we've been going for 40 minutes so far, so like, the chops are working, we're in the range. Um, so I'm going to go back to the brass gym, um, and I'm doing the exercise Beautiful Sound. Um, we won't do it with a drone this time because I, I want to. I remember back at the beginning we're working with this, the breathing builder, breath builder to work on coordination between the in and the out. I want that to remain sort of, sorry, a focus of what I'm doing, which means that I need to be focusing on it. So, beautiful sounds. Now we're working the range. <laughs>
because I can't kind of talk while I do them, obviously. Um, the goals right now, as I said, as I have said, is about connecting that in and out, really making that even, but then connecting the top whole note all the way across the measure. So that sustain spins all the way to the re-articulation, and that we're coming back to the same pitch. <laughs> I believe in um, is to not go way past what's working. Um, we're trying to build good habits and reinforce positive physical things, airflow, buzz, all that. Um, so for me, the, the A flat to the B flat felt a little not great. And that was the second to last high one I did. So then when I got to the final high one, um, and just, you know, I had a heavy day of playing yesterday, chops don't feel great. I made the decision, this is the last one I do because I'll have to be doing very focused, specific work on it to make sure the A to the B natural floats out. I know if I go past that B flat to C on the next one, I could get the C, but it's not going to be using sort of the process I want. So we stopped. The goal is, you know, we worked in a high range, we're working on the process. Um, there's other ways to get up there, and if the sake is just to play the high note, that's not the point of yesterday. The focus in this one is a beautiful sound throughout the range of the horn. You go until you lose the ability to do that, maybe one more notch, because we're working, and then you go, okay, I'm done, and you walk away. If it's a big focus for the session, I'm saying this is a high range focus, I would then do this again. I probably wouldn't get as high, um, and that's, that's the 
I don't do the Caruso method, but that's a thought from the Caruso method, is we want to go as high as comfortable, and then we can sort of back up. All right, so we're looking at the scrolling thing. Uh, we've done breathing gym, we've done brass gym, we've done some setting up exercises, um, and we've done some scale work. So I'm letting it scroll by to make sure I remember what I said I'm going to do. I'm pretty sure I know what it is. Uh, setting exercises, we did those. So we're waiting, we're waiting. Etudes, okay. Today. Oh, I should put a period. Etudes, today's material. Um, uh, so let's let me jump over to my screen capture and let's go. We are going to do. Oh, I don't know if I have this on my tablet. Hang on. That might stop me from doing this. All right, we're not doing that. We're going to go to the next thing. I was going to do some flow studies, but I can't. So at first is the blast. Oh, no. Um, these are... Um, where are they? Not going right off the screen. Uh, Bordoni studies. This is Bordoni number 13. Um, the last time I did this, um, we're going to work with the same excerpt chunk. Yeah, we're getting close to an hour, so we are sort of the end is here. What number is that? Number 14. Um, and again, sort of, I like to say what I'm working on while I'm stopping. Uh, so for this one, as you know, this was setting up. I've been doing a lot of stuff that pivots sort of around the D. Today. Um, and we're going to continue that. And we're trying to try to make this flow as easy as we can. Um, can we get my metronome going? Um, yeah. Yeah. So we're going to do the first chunk is going to go from the beginning to where you see the piano, the second line after the comma. But we're going to do that much first, um, just to read through. <laughs> I'm just trying to smooth out those three notes. I think it was nice and even. Yeah, just that much. And I'm going to do it a few times. Great. Music stand can get up to there without being annoying. Cool. Okay, so we're going to smooth it out. Same thing going down, same D to B, but like I was kind of, the, the note was falling back.
about to play a B flat or bad view, um, as opposed to a F. So I, I tried to play E flat major arpeggio and then F major. <laughs> Bordoni study isn't working on, yes, it is working on playing a beautiful melody that spans, you know, it, it, it doesn't stay put, it is always moving around, so it, it's working on, like, evenness and tone moving throughout the register. Um, and, you know, there's not huge articulation, but the articulation is so specific, so having specific articulation, great fluidity and sustain and evenness of sound, that's the goal. Force yourself beyond saying the goal is to play all of these notes right. That's step one of many. <coughs> Excuse me. Measure one to two is still sloppy. Um, not the first note. That was, that was just me getting a good piano. But getting this smooth isn't working. So next time I'm focusing on that. And then measure 17. I'm navigating this. Without the top notes changing in tone. 
It's funny, the, the run through, I got the D not a C, so I got a C not a D. So it's not consistent. So next time I come through, that's the goal. Um, so that'll be next session. But for now, um, we're jumping to Copresh, um, something technical to work on. Um, and by Copresh, I mean Maxine Alphonse. That's not Copresh at all. Um, that's Maxine Alphonse, book four, number three. I'm going to put my tablet. Um, last time we were here, we worked on the opening. It was me. Um, <clears throat> so if you see on the second line, after sans ralente, so after the, you know, no ral, we're starting there. Um, and again, it's always good to identify the etude. They tell you what this is about uh, en français at the top, but just notice, noticing that like starting on the third line after the breath mark, it's the same thing as the open in inversion. So it's material we know. Um, we're going to start under tempo though. Start 72. And we're going to read from the forte in the second line to the breath mark uh, before the scales. So that's the plan for just to get it in our ear. <laughs> we just got to. So if you're following along, this is the top two lines and a measure. Same problems before. Ah, my break's not working today. That's not trying. session here. Um, 
Um, I probably won't do a second stream today on this stuff. Um, it's a long weekend, so I don't know. I'm, I'm going to try to do one tomorrow that's up in the air. Um, as always, thanks for those that have come by. Um, please remember to follow as well. Use the suggestion box if there's something you'd like to see me do, do more of. If you have questions that you didn't want to ask in chat, you can send me messages, whatnot. I'd love to share ideas and talk about them. So until next time, thank you for stopping by those that did. And you'll tell your friends, tell your family, tell your neighbor.